All right, well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to this meeting of the Orange County School Board. Um, this is a time of year that the school board absolutely loves because at the end of the year, uh, we seem to get a wave of uh, student recognitions, scholar recognitions, and uh, adult uh, leader recognitions in our community as well. So uh, we always love it when we can do laudatory recognitions uh, on behalf of um, those who make us such a great public school system. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right in because we do have a, a lengthy program tonight. And I'm going to invite somebody up to the podium to lead us in our pledge and our moment of silence and that is a shining example of an outstanding student but also an, an outstanding athlete and an outstanding citizen and that is Alana Wolfberg from Timber Creek High School and Alana if you'll come up and lead us and then I'm gonna brag on Alana a little bit after that welcome will you please stand and bow your heads for a moment of silence Thank you. And now the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. So Alana, if you can stand there just for a moment. Alana, if you do not follow tennis, ladies and gentlemen, is once again the 2018 state champion in Class 4A singles. Congratulations. Not only is Alana a state champion, but she is also nationally ranked a tennis prodigy, uh, and she just finished another flawless season. And what makes this even more remarkable is Alana is only a junior, and this is her third straight title, so you can do the math. <laughs> Ever since ninth grade, she's been winning tennis championships, and Alana, the way you led us into that Pledge of Allegiance, it's, if it's half as fast as your serve, you have another. <laughs> You have another championship in your in your future. Thank you. On top of all that, uh, she's a tremendous citizen in her school and a student leader and also a wonderful scholar as well. And Alana, are your parents here this evening? They are, right there. Could we have them stand? We always like to recognize great parents. Let yeah. us stand let us recognize you as well. Thank you, Alana, so much for coming down tonight and letting us recognize you. Uh, sticking with our sports theme this evening, we want to recognize all of our state champion title winners, and that's actually a misnomer. It's not all of them. It's, it's our latest batch because we do recognize them throughout the year. But uh, joining us at the podium now will be uh, Athletic Director, District Athletic Director, Doug Patterson, to introduce us to the rest of our coaches and athletes who have recently won state championships. Welcome, Doug. Thank you, Chair Sublette, for having us. Thank you for this recognition. In track and field, we actually have four state champions here tonight to be recognized. The first from Freedom High School, Coach Leonard Malik is here to introduce his athlete. Timothy won three consecutive state championships in the 1600 meter run. According to the Orlando Sentinel, he is only the second young man to do so since 19. 49. <laughs> Timothy is the most successful male track athlete in Freedom High School history. He also had the best attendance because of his excellent work ethic, work capacity, and ability not to get injured. His will to win coupled with his will to prepare has made him a champion. He had to overcome many obstacles. With the aid of his immediate family, he has overcome adversity. When he runs in the Freedom Orlando uniform, he represents Freedom High School and the Orange County public school system. He has represented you well for four years. Next year, he will be representing the University of North Florida in Jacksonville. I have coached dozens of state champions during my 51-year coaching career. If I had to rank the top 10, number one would be Timothy Doyle. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Coach, and congratulations, Timothy. From Timber Creek High School, Assistant Principal Nan Palermo is here to introduce their state champion. On behalf of Dr. Paduano, I'd like to introduce you to Austin Thompson. He has beaten our school pole vault and long jump records to become the state championship this year, and he will be joining Timothy and uh, running his legacy at University of North Florida in Jacksonville. Congratulations. Thank you, Ms. Palermo. Congratulations to Austin. From Oak Ridge High School, Coach Adika Bent is here to introduce their state champion. Hello everyone, good night. I'm here to introduce the most incredible athlete of the year, in my opinion, Marquesha Myers. Marquesha Myers have been at Oak Ridge for four years. She's a letter winner in five different other sports, cross country, weightlifting, cheerleading, um, as well as swimming. Cross, uh, Marquesha holds our school record in the triple jump. Last year, she was second on the podium, and this year she finally did it, 40 feet four. <laughs> Marquesha is also a, a, um, a scholar student. She has a 4.0 weighted GPA. She's on a number of different clubs at our school, um, one being the mentoring program that started this year called Kicks. Um, she's a, a wonderful mentor in, in our community around Oak Ridge High School at the YMCA. Um, Marquesha also holds every single um, long jump, triple jump, um, state level, um, qualifications at our at our school so every year someone has to from her freshman year she broke the record she broke it her sophomore year she broke it her junior year and she set it even higher her senior year so with further ado your scholar athlete Marquesha Myers thank you coach Ben congratulations Marquesha and our four state champion is from Winter Park High School Rafaela Gibbons she won the state title in the 1600 meter run this was the second win for Rafaela who also took the state title as a ninth grader Rafaela could not be with us tonight because of the banquet that was also scheduled for tonight I will accept the certificate and make sure it's delivered on her behalf we do have another state championship to announce Congratulations to Olympia High School's water polo team and Coach Stephanie Johnson Passell is here to introduce the team. Thank you. Uh, last night I went to a Metro coaches meeting and a local coach came up to me and said, hey, congratulations on that state championship. And then they said, wasn't that a surprise? I, I said, no, not to me, it wasn't a surprise. These young men that we have in front of you did some incredible things this season. They scored 520 goals compared to having 215 scored against us. We won the Super Tournament, the Metro West Championship, the District Championship, the Regional Championship, and for the first time ever in our school history, we won the State Championship. <laughs> My favorite thing about coaching these men that I'm gonna to introduce to you in a few minutes is the fact that they like to learn. They know how to take responsibility, they know how to take responsibility to score, and they know how to give it up and give up the assist when a teammate has a better opportunity to score. My most favorite thing, however, is how they support one another. They support one another in the game, no matter what, whether it's our lead scorer, Luke Carey scoring the game-winning goal in our regional final, or whether it's Ada McConkie, a first-year freshman playing, who turns another player in the state final game. They support each other. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to the team, and if you guys would stand as I introduce you. First, we have freshman Ziad Abdel Majid. <laughs> Senior goalie going to UF, majoring in medicine next year, Sahil Nayak. <laughs> freshman who got to score, a freshman scoring in the state semifinal and the state final game, Eli Schweitzer. Senior captain and one of the most positive leaders you'll ever meet, Chad Berrian. <laughs> Senior and class valedictorian, valedictorian of the class of Olympia High School, pretty impressive, Thomas Russo. <laughs> Junior first year player with one of the strongest arms in the state, Kyle Dunlap. Up and coming sophomore, Jet Zhang. <laughs> Strong arm big guy, Carlos Lopez. 
Another one of our positive leaders, Yash Bat. Now I'd like to bring you around to our starters. Our sophomore starter, Ryan Hopegill. Ryan had 170 saves this season and he came up really big for the team in the regional final game when he had two huge blocks in the last seven seconds of the game bringing us to the state final four. Captain Ben Phillips. Ben brings a lot of speed to our game and he is also the prime, one of our primary sprinters and he's also a big leadership in the pool using his voice. Next up, junior Danny Cruz. Danny Cruz lit up the cage to lead the team's success in both the semifinal and final game of the state championship game with his arm. Next up, sophomore Griffin Ewalt. <laughs> Griffin Ewalt plays the center position and he does a great job on defense and he slows everybody down, uh, which makes our defense even stronger as a team. Next up, sophomore Alec Johnson. Alec is our defense specialist and as a sophomore, he already leads the team in drawn kickouts. Next up, sophomore Toma Mack. <laughs> this sophomore had 10 steals in the state final game and over 80 steals over the course of the season and ended up scoring 50 as a sophomore. Then last up is uh, junior captain Luke Carey. Luke Carries, who I talked about, who made the final score in a very tight game against Seminole High School. He leads our team this season in goals, assists, and steals. Luke hit a big uh, milestone this year of scoring 100 games in one season, and that's what took the Titans over to an 18 to 15 win over South Broward in the state final game. Congratulations, boys. Congratulations, coach, and congratulations, guys, on, on a fantastic championship. Due to weather, we're still waiting on the final games in softball, which we hope will finally start tomorrow, where West Orange and Timber Creek are competing in the state semifinals, as well as baseball, which will be uh, tonight and tomorrow with Dr. Phillips and Timber Creek still alive as well. So thank you for having us. Thank you, Mr. Patterson, and, and I think uh, what's so exciting for the members of this board is uh, I want to thank the coaches in particular. Um, any of us, uh, all of us, have had children, and I think all of our kids have played sports, and we know coach, coaches are tough on you, oh, yeah. and they yell at you sometimes, That's right. once in a while, but they also love you, and I think that love really comes through in the comments that these coaches had uh, for all their uh, scholar athletes, so thank you for your coaching as well. Uh, our next group of students are also winners in every sense of the word, and they're among the best and brightest, not only in Orange County, but throughout the entire United States of America. And they are our 2018 National Merit Scholars. As we wait for another round of winners to be announced this summer tonight, we recognize the seven students. Uh, and to put that in perspective, folks, that's out of 11 or 12,000 students roughly in their grade level in the entire county who we know were selected as National Merit Scholars. And this is out of the 35 Orange County Public School semifinalists um, who were semifinalists. And I believe, if memory serves me right, to be a semifinalist, you have to score in the top. I believe it's 1% of the country in the PSAT uh, to become a National Merit Scholar semifinalist. So you can imagine the competition is even stiffer to go from those 35 semifinalists to these seven finalists tonight. Uh, each of these uh, scholars will receive a National Merit uh, Corporate Scholarship, and I'd like to ask each of them to stand as I call their name. First, we have Daniel Wu from Timber Creek. Daniel, where are you? Is Daniel here? Oh, come on, Daniel. I just bragged on you. <laughs> Well, Daniel, yeah, thank you, Ms. Flynn. Daniel is studying. Daniel, <laughs> you need to say your lines louder. They're better than mine. <laughs> Daniel received a National Merit Siemens Scholarship. Uh, we also have Jennifer Law from Winter Park High School. Is Jennifer here tonight? Jennifer, welcome. <laughs> Jennifer received a National Merit Lidos Inc. Scholarship. Congratulations, Jennifer. The next scholarship recipients were awarded $2,500 from the National Merit Scholarship Corporation's own fund, and they are Gianluca Delgado. 
John Luca, where are you? John Luca is a proud graduate as of today from Cypress Creek High School. Congratulations, John Luca. Suming Kim from Olympia High School. Sue me here? No? Justin Wurst from Boone High School. Proud Brave. Justin, welcome. Congratulations, Justin. And Maya Chajuri from Winter Park High School. Is Maya here? Congratulations, Maya. Well, I want to thank all of our National Merit Scholar finalists who were able to join us tonight. Um, I always share with audiences whenever I'm out speaking to groups of students in particular that the most important uh, persons in our entire school system are not the teachers, not the administrators, certainly not the school board, but it's students who set a great example for their fellow students. And nobody got to be a National Merit Scholar simply by dint of brains alone. Uh, you got there because you worked your tails off and studied your tails off for 12 or 13 years of school. So congratulations to all of our National Merit Scholars. Lastly, on our student recognitions, if you come to our school board meetings, you've probably heard us talk about steak and lobster. <laughs> Not the food, but the concept. And here to explain that to us is the man who coined that term for us, our very own superintendent over, or excuse me, associate superintendent over career and technical education, Mr. Mike Iron Brewster. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Chairman Sublet, school board members, and Superintendent Jenkins. It is an honor to recognize 22 amazing students tonight as our 2017-2018 CTE Super Scholars. Years ago, there were two tracks for students, college-bound or vocational. In recent years, that has been replaced with a new way of thinking in which college prep courses and CTE courses can both prepare students for a bright future. Today we recognize 22 students who have taken CTE and college prep courses at the highest level. These are high school students who are completing their CTE dual enrollment program while also earning five or more credits in AP, IB, or state college dual enrollment and maintaining a GPA of 3.95 or higher. Allow me to introduce our 2017-18 CTE Super Scholars, or as the chairman said, our steak and lobster superstars. <laughs> From Evans High School, Javon Allen, Digital Media multi Multimedia Design at our Mid-Florida campus. <laughs> From Jones High School, Chantress Allen, Patient Care Technician for Orlando campus. <laughs> From Apopka High School, Ross Brinkman, Game Simulation Animation Programming at our Mid-Florida campus. From Timber Creek High School, Andrew DeLeon, Emergency Medical Technician from our Mid-Florida campus. <laughs> from Olympia High School, Dave Ernest, Pharmacy Technician, Westside Campus. <laughs> from Ocoee High School, Ashera, Asheria Foster, Pharmacy Technician, Westside Campus. From Jones High School, Danasia Gates, Patient Care Technician, Orlando Campus. From Jones High School, Odravius Gay, Patient Care Technician, Orlando Campus. From Jones High School, Brianna Green, Patient Care Technician, Orlando Campus. From Oak Ridge High School, Lydie Guersin, Medical Lab Assisting, Orlando Campus. From Lake Nona High School, you may recognize the name, Alex Jara, Welding Technology, Mid-Florida Campus. He wanted to get that done before his father went to Las Vegas. <laughs> From Jones High School, Nia Jones, Patient Care Technician, Orlando Campus. From Jones High School, Danielle King, Patient Care Technician, Orlando Campus. From Jones High School, Samantha Miriessier, Patient Care Technician, Orlando Campus. 
from University High School, Michael Nelson, Game Simulation, Animation, and Programming, Mid-Florida Campus. From Ocoee High School, Ashley Assant, Pharmacy Technician, Westside Campus. From Ocoee High School, Kiara Peterson, Digital Media, Multimedia Design, Westside Campus. From Ocoee High School, David Rocher, Electricity, Westside Campus. From West Orange High School, Hannah Simmerly, Digital Photography Technology, Mid Florida Campus. From Freedom High School, Alexandro Sofianos, Electricity, Westside Campus. From Winter Park High School, Amani Sanji, Computer Systems and Information Technology, Winter Park Campus. From Oak Ridge High School, Asua Sopan, Medical Lab Assisting, Orlando Campus. Congratulations to all of our Steak and Lobster Super Scholars. Thank you. <laughs> So, Dr. Armbruster, I feel compelled to point out to the audience who doesn't know the inside joke, Dr. Jara is our deputy superintendent. He's not going to Las Vegas to gamble. <laughs> He's going because he was newly appointed the superintendent of Henderson County Schools out in Las Vegas. Clark, Clark County. County, Clark County. <laughs> which is the fourth, fifth, fifth largest school district in the entire country. So, Dr. Jara, wave your hand so we can all, is he down there, Mr. Hallett? There he is. Congratulations, Dr. Jar. Thanks for making us look so good. So um, before I have all the students come up here and, and athletes to shake their hands, I'd like to ask all of the wonderful parents who raise these wonderful scholar athletes in the room to please stand and let us recognize you as well. Please, parents, stand up. Thank you for raising such wonderful role models for all of our students. It's genuinely appreciated. So at this time, um, I know the board would like to shake the hands of all of our honorees tonight. So if you can, do the best you can, uh, starting with um, our athletes. Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll go down front to meet y'all. Um, so let's have our athletes come up first, and then after that, our National Merit Scholars, and then after that, our, we'll just call them the Steak and Lobster winners, our Steak and Lobster Scholars.
Thank you. So if we could also have the coaches come up, I forgot to mention, and we'd love to shake the hands of the coaches as well. Oh, yeah. So at this time, we're going to go into our recognition of our Leadership Orange class, and I want to thank you all for your patience and for waiting. Um, any of the students here, you're not being rude at all. It is still school week, so if you want to head out, not study, do good on those finals. The seniors. <laughs> the seniors are finished. Get ice cream. The we'll get some ice cream if you don't have to study. Bill, you'll see that when your kids graduate. They're the seniors are finished. Oh, Lord. I mean, they're not coming back for nothing. They didn't even come tonight. <laughs> they had their um, graduation. All right, so this evening we have a um, 
do. A very special recognition for our board and, and, and uh, the superintendent. Uh, eight years ago, uh, the school board embraced an idea a former board member Rick Roach had. And really, uh, we always try to give Rick his props because yes. this was solely his idea, and it's yes. one of the best ideas I believe that this board has, 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 has ever had. And that is to start a program that we call Leadership Orange as an incubator for community involvement and for uh, helping our community understand more fully uh, the, f the function of Orange County Public Schools and the operations and and uh, everything that we try to do uh, here at Orange County Public Schools, which fundamentally is produce great citizens and high school graduates who can go on to achieve their dreams and their visions. Uh, the Leadership Orange program, um, which was developed by our marketing and events department, has to date given us more than 230 citizens who have stepped forward to experience firsthand what it takes to educate 208,000 students every day. And before I go any further, I want to thank uh, all of our Leadership Orange uh, graduates tonight because what often goes unspoken and is never in my script is what a commitment this took on your part. Um, folks, when they stepped up and they volunteered for this program, they offered to give us one day a month, an entire day. Uh, almost all of the graduates uh, work full-time jobs, so thank their employers as well. If you're self-employed, thank you for taking time off your, your work, and thank you for taking times out of your homes to come experience this program. We believe that this is, and you know what my script says, is turn them into leaders in this community for public education, but I happen to know about half the members of this class very well, and I think that's a little bit of a misnomer because um, I think every member of this class was already a leader in education and an advocate for public education in our community, and for that we want to thank you as well. The 34 members of this year's Leadership Orange A class came from all over the district representing unique interests and backgrounds, and their diversity reflects the diversity of our student population. Our class members spent the majority of one day each month for seven months going into our schools, our Orange Technical College, and even the Pine Hills Transportation Center, where they got to drive and crash a bus. <laughs> <laughs> They learned everything they could about our building programs, school budgeting, teaching and learning, community engagement, exceptional student education, and our operations, including that hands-on expertise driving that school bus. This evening, their journey ends, but certainly not their involvement uh, with our district. As some of the most knowledgeable citizens on the subject of public education in Orange County, I expect that we will hear from many of them going forward in the future as we've continued to hear from them this year and have heard from them in the past. Our former leadership Orange members have participated on school board advisory committees, on selection committees uh, for our numerous employee recognition programs and our Hall of Fame. And I will share with you graduates, you are our first go-to whenever we need to fill a position, whether it's on a board, whether it's on a selection committee, whether it's on our, uh, uh, our, our uh, school schedule committee or anything, we always look first to our leadership Orange graduates. So be careful what you ask for. We're like the mafia. Once we get our hooks in you, we don't let go. Um, listen to some of the comments that our Leadership Orange graduates have had about Orange County Public Schools. One participant said, Leadership Orange opened my eyes to so many things that I did not know about. I feel confident in sending my children through the public school system. Another said, the program is one of the most worthwhile things I've been a part of. I've learned so many valuable things that will serve me well as a strong advocate in the community for OCPS. Another said, and this is a common recurring comment that I hear from so many of our graduates, there are so many things happening in OCPS that I simply had no idea about. It was truly uh, eye-opening. Another said, I want to thank you, and I want to say how impressed I am that you took an interest in and spent the time uh, to, be, um, to, to start this program, and I thank you and hope you will refer others to this program and continue it. So I'd like to just close this before I turn it over to Dylan Thomas, your fearless facilitator, where is Dylan, um, and say thank you again for this time and commitment, and again, and from the bottom of my heart, and I know I speak for our entire board, because we all know so many of this particular class well, Mr. Thomas, thank you for already, for the involvement you already had with public education and for being such strong advocates. I always like to share with folks that I think I live in a very special community, because we live in a community where 
notwithstanding all the choices parents have overwhelmingly in Orange County, parents still choose the neighborhood public school as their number one education choice. And that's because of you all and because of the advocacy that you bring to the table. So thank you for that very, very much. Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Chair Sublette. And if I would, please, uh, if the board and uh, the superintendent would come forward down to the uh, well, we'll begin our, our introductions and the graduation. Okay. We'll, we'll bring them by. In front. In front of the chairs, please. In front. In front. All right. Superintendent Jenkins and ladies and gentlemen of the School Board of Orange County, I present to you Leadership Orange Class 8. Our first graduate is our reigning teacher of the year, Chris Aaron. And everybody who follows Chris, do exactly what she does. I've coached her. <laughs> Next, Sarah Bates. Yes, there's supposed to be some music, but I can't hear it. Samira Boney. Christine Brabucci. Carol Buchanan. Nikki Bucher. Uh, Karen Bush. <laughs> Stacy Cox. <laughs> Kathy Sue Ellis. Tracy Fagan. Lisa Finaldi Simmons. Nisha Jones. Malika Harrison. Jimmy King, the second. Michael Kulik. Chev Levin. Jennifer McDaniel. Gigi 
Angie Mormon. Rachel Silver Crop. Alger Studstill. Jane Thompson. Jamie Valentine. Nicole Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our 2017-18 Leadership Orange Class 8 graduates. Let's give them a big hand. And as you can tell, we're now going to take a team picture. All right, so I know it's graduation night, it's a special night, but I want all of you home by one o'clock. If you don't, I'll find you. <laughs> Congratulations to all of our graduates. Good job. Great job. All right, so at this time, um, you all can head home if you'd like. <laughs> I've never figured out a way to tactfully say that. Go have a cup of coffee, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, congratulations. I'm get ice cream. <laughs> Go have an ice cream. <laughs> I didn't. So at this time, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Jenkins to recognize our newly appointed administrators. And I want to thank all the um, 
family members and loved ones in particular who have waited all this time. Uh, this is a very special part of our meeting and one that we love because we get to recognize tremendous career accomplishments. So without further ado, let me turn it over to Dr. Jenkins. Thank you, Chairman. Members of the board, it is my pleasure to announce first um, some principals and assistant principals that are being promoted. And then I will say for last uh, six shifts in my cabinet that I want you to hear from as well. So let's do principals and APs. First, I have Randall Longhouse, resource teacher at Lawton Childs Elementary, will be the new assistant principal at Ting Timber Springs Middle School. Thank you, Chairman Sublette, school board members, Dr. Jenkins and your staff for the opportunity to serve the children and families of Timber Springs Middle School. With me tonight is my girlfriend, Diane. Thank you for being here. Um, also, Mr. Dennis Gonzalez, principal of Lawton Childs Elementary. Thank you for being a mentor and role model. Finally, Dr. Cantrell, principal of Timber Springs Middle School. Um, I'm honored to join you in serving the teachers, students, staff, and community members of uh, Timber Springs. I'm proud to be a Wolverine and ready to go. Thank you. Next we have Christy Brown, acting assistant principal at Robinswood Middle, will be the new assistant principal at Robinswood Middle School. First, I would like to thank Chairman Sublette and the school board for this opportunity. Second, I want to thank Superintendent Jenkins for her, for her and her staff for affording me this opportunity. Third, I want to thank those who assisted me throughout my career, Dr. Williams, Dr. Lawson, and Principal Jefferson. Last but not least, I want to thank my mother, Gloria Maffitt, my father, Charles Brown, my son, Khalil, and my friends and colleagues for your unyielding support. Samuel Danner was acting principal. He will now be the principal at Ivy Lane Elementary School. All right, good afternoon. All right. <laughs> um, I would like to thank Chairman Sublette and the school board for this opportunity and Superintendent Jenkins and the staff for this opportunity. I would like to also thank my mentors, Ms. Talbert Irving, she's here tonight, been my mentor. Um, Mr. Jackie Massey, Mr. Frederick Brooks, Mr. Timothy Akins, I had a lot of mentors help me along the, the way. I'd also like to thank my mother, my father, Barbara and George Herring, and my sister Rapunzel which they are no longer with me, but gave me a lot of support. My son, Sam Danner Jr., and my son here tonight with me, Simeon Danner, and of course, last but not least, my beautiful wife, Felicia Danner, for uh, everlasting support. And I, I, we're going to do great things at the Ivelaine Elementary, where smart is cool and a place of excellence. Nancy Martinez, from acting to assistant principal at Walker Middle School. I want to thank Chairman Sutherland, school board members, Dr. Jenkins and staff for this opportunity to serve the student staff and community at Walker. I want to thank my former principal, Mr. Sean Brown, for providing opportunities to develop my leadership skills. I want to thank my current principal, Ms. Becky Watson, for welcoming to join the Walker family. I want to also thank my best friend, Dr. Nicole Valverde, here tonight for her encouragement and for being such a great friend. And lastly, I want to thank my husband, Dr. Alfred Soto, and my daughter, Scarla and Grace, for always being there for me and allowing me to pursue my dreams. Thank you. Amanda Maxwell from Acting to Principal at Princeton Elementary School. Good evening, Chairman, School Board members, Dr. Jenkins and staff. Thank you for the opportunity to serve the students and the families of Princeton Elementary. I couldn't be happier. I want to thank my husband and my mother for being incredibly patient and supportive with me. And also my mentors, Dr. Ella Thompson, Dr. Maria Vasquez, Dr. Anna Diaz, and Principal Margaret Talbert Irving for everything you've done to support me in growing into an instructional leader. Latricia Pender from Acting to Principal at Wheatley Elementary. Greetings, Chairman, School Board members, Dr. Jenkins, and staff. Thank you for the opportunity to serve as Principal at Wheatley Elementary School. This evening, I would like to thank my loving husband, Texas Pender, as well as our daughter, and my mentor, 
Principal Meredith left take us, as well as many others in the room. I am ready to show my Panther proud. We are smart, we are great, we are Wheatley. Beth Russo, Assistant Principal at Colonial High School to become the new Principal at Jackson Middle. Thank you, Chairman Sublette, school board members, Dr. Jenkins and staff for this amazing opportunity to serve the students and the community of Jackson Middle School. I am thrilled to become a Jackson Jaguar. I'd also like to thank my Colonial High School family for joining me tonight and as well my Cypress Creek family for, for being here to support. I'd especially like to thank my principal, Mr. Martinez, for his continued encouragement and support. Thank you, sir, I'm very grateful. And I'd like to thank all of my friends that are here today for coming out to support me. I am very grateful for each one of you. Thank you so much. Oh, one more. <laughs> I'd like to thank my family, my boys. <laughs> Ethan and Sam that are here with me tonight, and I'd like to thank my husband, David. I could not do this without you. Thank you so much. Excellent save. So, and I, I feel like in the spirit of transparency, I should tell all of the family members and spouses, you're being introduced and applauded at this point because you have just signed up to also uh, help out with that new administrator. Whatever their job might be, you're sort of expected to work for free. And so we, we applaud you now and, and we celebrate you because we know you're going to put in some volunteer hours as well. Congratulations to all those principals and assistant principals. Now let me tell you about some shifts in my cabinet. I have a few of those I want to speak to you as well. And then I will save uh, the catalyst, the reason for some of this shuffling uh, for last and have him say a few comments. Let me start with Robert Bixler, who was Executive Director for Curriculum and Instruction. He will now be an Associate Superintendent for Curriculum Instruction and Digital Learning. Thank you, Chairman Sublette, Board Members, Dr. Jenkins. I look forward to the next phase of my career with OCPS. When Dr. Jenkins met with me and we talked about my future, it made me reflect on all that's happened to get me to this point. My path was shaped by many people in this room, they seem to all be sitting in the back though, um, who spent time mentoring, coaching me, and opening doors to new opportunities. I work for an amazing organization and I work with a great team. I thank each of you, um, each and every one of you. On a personal note, there he is. On a personal note, I want to say thank you to Dr. Jara. Over his tenure in OCPS, the opportunities, the professional growth, and guidance he has shown me is beyond anything I could have ever imagined. I wish you all the best. Although my wife couldn't be here, I want to thank her for her support, and don't tell her, but I have flowers being delivered to the West Learning community tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, thank you all very much. Leanne Bradshaw moves from executive area director in the high school team to area superintendent for the East Learning Community. <laughs> Chairman Sublett, school board members, and Dr. Jenkins, I would like to thank you for this amazing opportunity to serve the East Learning Community. I would like to thank my mentors. Um, first, Dr. Williams, who hired me to, at OCPS, and Dr. Jara for all of his support. I've had two amazing area superintendents, Dr. Lawson and Dr. Vasquez, and the chief of high schools, Dr. Harold Border. I appreciate all the support and guidance that they have given me as I've grown in my career. I would like to thank my children. They're both off at college, but they're watching online. My daughter, Alex, is at Auburn, and my son, Wesley, is at FSU. And because they couldn't be here, my best friend, Jennifer Sasser, surprised me with this amazing group of OCPS leaders and future leaders that are here to cheer me on because my family is elsewhere. So I appreciate all of you. Thank you for your support. And I look forward to working with the families, the staff, the students, and the community in the East. Thank you again. 
Now, if you follow the dominoes, the reason she's going to be area superintendent in the East Learning Community is because John Wright will be leaving that assignment to be our new associate superintendent for the Office of Innovation. Uh, Chairman Sublette, distinguished board member, Superintendent Jenkins, um, thank you so much for this opportunity to um, shift hats just a little bit and move into the role of associate superintendent over innovation. I'm looking forward to working with um, amazing teachers and principals and helping them develop and implement their innovation plans. There are so many uh, great things happening across our district, so I'm hoping um, the innovation team will be able to help um, develop, nurture, and then grow, and then um, you know, cross, um, get some of these um, best practices across schools and get connections made across schools so that we can ensure that um, learning is challenging, but it's also memorable and lots of fun. So I'm excited about this new role. I want to um, thank two mentors who aren't here, but they served in this district for many years. Um, Dr. Rose Taylor, who's now a professor at UCF, and Miss Judy Cunningham, who, um, I always say she's the one who really taught me how to be a principal, so I, I always want to thank them. I want to um, wish Dr. Bradshaw, I know Leanne's going to do a great job taking over for the East Learning Community, so congratulations to her and her fan club that's here. <laughs> thank you. I would just add, um, John Wright, there is no better talent in this district that can lead that innovation um, drive that we are looking forward to. State of Florida identified certain schools that they called schools of excellence because of their past behavior, and we challenged them to come up with um, uh, applications on how they want to innovate, how they can have earned autonomy and really do some things differently and show us uh, how they can further narrow achievement gaps and lead our students to success. And so we've asked for that first batch of 13 uh, for John Wright to be the leader there. And so look forward to hearing more details about that in the near future. All right, let's get to some more dominoes that are falling because of a certain individual. Um, <laughs> So let's go to um, the School Transformation Office. Deshonda Brown Cannon will be the new Associate Superintendent in the STO office, moving from Executive Area Director. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman Sublette, school board members, Dr. Jenkins, to my mentors, Dr. Jar, Dr. Vasquez, and most of all to my mentor, Dr. Kathy Schuler. I'm grateful for all of the knowledge and skills that you have imparted into me these past five years. I appreciate your love and dedication and your support in my career, and I promise I'm gonna take care of the School Transformation Office, and I'm gonna make you proud. Also, I'd like to thank my Tangelo Park family who's here to support me this afternoon, the School Transformation Office family, my mother and father and family watching in Jacksonville, Florida, my cousin watching in Texas, and my husband, Sean Cannon, my daughter, Kia Cannon, and son, Sean Cannon Jr. <laughs> And Kathy Shuler will be leaving the School Transformation Office to take on a broader role. For those that do not know it, her expertise certainly was beyond school transformation for some time, but we purposely placed her in that more narrow role, and she was able to do tremendous things for this district. In case anyone's wondering, uh, her expertise in curriculum and instruction is extremely broad. We know she is well capable to become our new Chief Academic Officer. Thank you. Good evening, Chairman Sublett, school board members, Dr. Jenkins, and staff. Thank you for giving me this amazing opportunity to serve OCPS in a different capacity. I've learned a lot from an incredible team of educators and mentors like Dr. Jara, Dr. Williams, and Dr. Lawson. My goal is to utilize the knowledge gained to help support our vision of being the top producer of successful students in the nation. With me this evening, I have my husband, Tim Schuler, Tyler Schuler, my son, Lisa Lewis, my sister, and the STO team members. And I know they're gonna be in great hands, Mrs. Brown Cannon, thank you. Then I'd like to introduce our new deputy superintendent because of someone who caused all of this shifting. 
our new deputy superintendent. I have to tell you, uh, six years ago, um, if Dr. Jara had not come across my path, uh, she certainly would have been my number one choice of our team here in OCPS. The great thing, uh, board members and audience about Orange County Public Schools is we have tremendous bench strength. Uh, when I look around my cabinet, there is such incredible talent, uh, and I expect more and more of them to be expanding and taking the good things that are going on here in Orange County to other districts as well, but not tomorrow. <laughs> so. So I want to introduce with great confidence and such a delight uh, our next Deputy Superintendent, Dr. Maria Vasquez. Good evening, Chairman Sublette, School Board, Superintendent Jenkins, and staff. I am so grateful for the opportunity to serve as your next Deputy Superintendent. I've been very blessed in my career in Orange County Public Schools to have individuals who took a chance on me, who believed in me, and who helped me grow professionally. There had been many, but I would like to recognize just a few this evening. Mr. Ronald Blocker, Dr. Kathy Pope, Dr. Jennifer Reeves, uh, Cleve Henry, Dr. Jara, and of course, Dr. Jenkins. I've also been incredibly fortunate to work with individuals who were passionate about education and committed each and every day to provide the best for our families. I am thankful for the opportunity to have worked alongside them, and I am thankful for those that are here from my team this evening to support me. Last but certainly not least, I want to thank my family. First, my husband Ulysses, who has always believed in me, even when I didn't believe in myself. He was always patient and understanding. And to my three children, Stephanie, who's here tonight, Elizabeth and Robert, who could not be here, thank you for all of the support you've given me all of these years. You have been and continue to be a source of pride and joy in my life. Thank you. Lastly, I told you I would recognize someone who started all this ruckus, and we are incredibly proud. I've said it on more than one occasion, but words cannot really express how extremely proud we are of our very own Dr. Jara, who will be the new superintendent in Clark County Public Schools in Las Vegas. Now, there are some who think um, that I have taken some great pride in nurturing his growth, that I am like a mother, and I want to set the record straight. I'm not old enough, I am not <laughs> old enough to be his mother. However, I do consider myself his big sister. And I know that the children of Clark County, uh, that entire community, is going to benefit greatly from a tremendous talent uh, that has decided to leave us to go to them and only because he's going as superintendent in a district where I know he will have uh, a great impact and such phenomenal outcomes on behalf of children. That's the only reason I can gladly bid him Godspeed, Dr. Jara. Well, you know, um, last night I finalized my letter of resignation, superintendent. Um, just, it's been bittersweet leaving OCPS and I'll tell you it's um, because I've had the best job here in Orange County Public Schools. July 31, 2012 when I was appointed um, I said to, to the board and to this community that um, I was humbled to come work for a phenomenal team, just researching and, and understanding. And, and when I immediately met Superintendent Jenkins in my first interview, I knew this was a special place. Um, and I've had a front row seat to the best superintendent in the country. Um, it's been an honor to serve you and this phenomenal board and this phenomenal community and, and working with a phenomenal team. Um, Dr. Williams, We've known each other for some time before when I worked with the college board and the work you've done and you were doing at Jones High School. Um, and um, coming here working with uh, the best, I believe, the best area superintendents in the country. Um, so as I leave here, um, it's to replicate the great work that's happening here in Orange County Public Schools. Um, as you say, big sister, I, I hope to become sister districts. Um, to replicate the work 
of the talented administrators and phenomenal teachers um, in Orange County. Before I forget, uh, there's an important person that couldn't be here tonight, um, and my children, as Alex was supposed to be here for a recognition because his grandmother flew in and was delayed um, for the graduation tomorrow. So uh, my wife has been my rock, has been a phenomenal spouse. Um, as I mentioned last night to the leaders in level five, um, your spouses and superintendent, you mentioned that tonight, you give up a lot. Um, she has given up for my career and she will continue to do that uh, for me um, because my passion is to lead an urban school district. Thank you for everything you've done for me and will continue to do because I'm going to have you on speed dial. <laughs> and board members, it's just been an extreme pleasure and honor to work with this phenomenal school board. Thank you. Ms. Gould. I don't know if I can speak right now. <laughs> um, I am going to work my way up. Uh, congratulations to all the new administrators, assistant principals and principals. And, and the superintendent took the words right out of my mouth and my mind when she talked about our bench um, being deep. But but the pride that I feel in this room tonight and the, um, I don't use the word family too loosely because everybody always talks about a family. But there is a sense of family when you've been part of OCPS. And you see that in how our administrators have grown together, helped each other, leveraged each other's talents. Uh, and it is it is something really inspirational and unique um, coming from outside the education industry because you don't find that kind of spark and fire and chemistry in a team that often. And Dr. Jara, you will be deeply missed, uh, but your imprint here is forever, and you've given us a wonderful foundation to build on with the team that you. Uh, coached and put together and grew with and and thank you for your service here and thank you to your wife and your family for their service as well thank you miss Gould. great words miss Cobert. well we have an enormous amount of change coming in this room it's already started by the, by the end of the year this whole room is going to look very very different but i think it's good change and I want you to know, and I've told Dr. Jenkins, that I have a tremendous amount of confidence in the decisions that she has made and in the positions that she has placed all of you in. I trust her implicitly, but as I, I look over the list of the changes and the placement, I have so much confidence in, in what's going on here. I want you to know that. And for Dr. Jara, it's been an honor to work with you. And I want everyone here to know that when I was interviewed by the Nevada newspaper, she wanted to know what I thought of Dr. Jara, and I told her that the children of Nevada had just won the lottery of superintendents. And I believe that with all my heart. So congratulations to you, to all of you. Thank you so much for your service, and know that we have tremendous confidence in you, and we're going to continue to do great things for the children here in Orange County. Thank you. Ms. Flynn. Thank you. I, I wanted to congratulate all the new uh, moves and everything. I think it's great, and I echo my um, board mates here about uh, having the confidence in you because we've seen the training and 
Um, just, you know, how the selection process goes. I wanted to uh, congratulate Ms. Russo and uh, Mr. Longhorn for their appointments as principal of Jackson and AP over at Timber Springs. You're still in District 2, so I'm glad for that. Um, and all the other cabinet. I, you, this is um, my last year, so November, and it's bittersweet. I'm confident of my decision, but I will miss working with the level of intellect and, and the quality, integrity, and the character of all of your staff. So I really will miss that. And to Dr. Jara, he's actually my constituent because he does live in District 2. And I hear that over in Clark County, they're already passing out bracelets that have WWJD. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Whoa. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I saw that on Twitter. I saw that on Twitter. Careful, but the Beatles got in trouble with that. <laughs> I saw that on Twitter. Um, I thought th I thought it was pretty funny. I mean, you know, it's, um, but but um, Dr. Jar, you're going to do great over there, and I know it. You know, the, that community is going to see very quickly. Um, your strength of character, your desire, your inclusiveness, and your ability to reach out to everybody. You've been wonderful in helping me answer constituent uh, concerns and requests, and so I thank you for that. And uh, I know, uh, Dr. Vasquez, you're gonna be doing the same thing in the few months that I'm gonna be here, but um, congratulations to everybody, and we are gonna miss you very, very much. Congratulations. Mrs. Gordon. <coughs> Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Let, let me say to all of the great athletes that were gracing us and blessing us, um, I'm just excited um, of all of the students and their progress, especially with uh, Dr. Bernier, when um, he talked about the, the super scholars with the tech. I, I, I'm Brewster. Oh, Michael, I'm Brewster. Yes, my goodness, I get Bernie too. You're doing a great job there too. Yeah. All right, but uh, I, I, I think if you all had seen the graduation and that just took place for all of the Orange Technical College, that people have been writing just saying how awesome that was. And, and I know I'm looking for great changes there and the movement in which we're going to continue to build a relationship with the schools within the universities and colleges within the Central Florida area. I do want to say um, thank you, Mr. Sublet, for mentioning um, Rick Roach's dream. Everybody has a legacy up here. We all have a legacy, not because we wanted it, but because it was something that needed to happen because it was going to benefit children. So that leadership orange, just to see the quality of classmates coming through that and under, un, uh, under uh, uh, just under Dr. Jenkins, your team, all of them are just working together. And I saw Scott ju jumping around, and I know Dylan does a lot with it. You, they are doing a marvelous job with that because people are calling and wanting to be a part of the Leadership Orange. To all of the new administrators, congratulations to you. I know that you're going to do extremely well. But to the cabinet, Dr. Jenkins' executive cabinet, you have got to be special to sit in the chair <laughs> in, in the boardroom upstairs on the ninth floor. So I just say we look forward, all of the board members, every cabinet member gets an opportunity to work with us and we look forward to working with you and to your promotion. We wish you the best because she selected you as the best. So we, as up here on the board, we expect better and more. We want to see our kids succeed and you're the leaders that's going to make that happen, okay? Then finally, Dr. Jar, what can I say? You're going to need me. <laughs> and I'm here for you. I'm here. You, you have just been extraordinary. Um, I think in the, in the relationships that you have built with the board, I know that you're going to do well. Um, yeah, I think your personality will carry you far. And like I told you, don't try to come back because somebody else will already be in that seat. So we love you. 
<laughs> See, you cannot come down. Okay, we've already, you know, covered your spot. I heard you say that they cleaned out the office. No, 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 they didn't. No, they didn't. They hadn't cleaned it out yet. They're leaving it there for a few more days for you. But we wish you the best. We don't want you to come back. Okay, because you're already at number five. Okay, so we want you at number one. Okay, I think you can do it. You can make a difference from what you've learned here and elsewhere that will catapult you to number one. May God bless you and your family. Dr. Jar, I can tell you, you'll never get a big head with Mrs. Gordon next to you. <laughs> There's always more, always more. I'm reminded monthly, so <laughs> you're in good company. Always <laughs> more. Miss Moore. <laughs> And before I congratulate Dr. Jara, um, we have a, 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 a Dr. Pender from Wheatley, and I wanted to congratulate her to, to getting the position at Phyllis Wheatley and stay after I want to congratulate you myself. Um, we've had a wonderful time. I have to tell you a story about Dr. Jara because it's, it's, um, it, it kind of shows how um, even the smallest things really mattered to him. And we were having some challenges in my um, district with a lot of children just being anxious and, and overwrought with emotion. And, and I said, I need you to come to the school and talk to these kids. And uh, I, I was just like the little newspaper reporter asking him questions. And the way he engaged those fourth and fifth graders was just so special. And, and you made such a difference on those campuses. I don't know if those kids know where you're going. I might, we might have to go back. Well, you're leaving. And I'll just have to do it for you. Yeah, go back and tell them where he's headed. They'll be so proud of him as well. So it just goes to show that no matter what the task is at hand, you are you know, willing to do that. And I had a quote that I came across for the rest of you um, that I think is really true of OCPS and all of your leadership. And I wish I had written, but it's written this quote, but it's from John C. Maxwell. And he said, if you are a leader, the true measure of your success is not getting people to work. It's not getting people to work hard. It's getting people to work hard together. And that's really what we do here at OCPS. So congratulations to all of you. Well said. Mrs. Robinson. Why don't you just want to add my congratulations to all the new administrators. It's very exciting. I know you're all really excited. And you chose a really good night to get appointed, too, with all this movement going on. You're, you're in on the scoop. Um, and I, I want to do a special shout out to Ms. Maxwell. Where are you? Congratulations. Princeton loves you. And I'm so excited that you're now our, our real principal. So, um, yes, not, not just acting. You're, you're for real. I play one on TV. Um, anyway, congratulations to you. And then to all the movement. This is so exciting. I, I'm looking around. I think I have everyone's mobile number. <laughs> But if not, don't leave tonight before I get your mobile number, all the, new, the newbies. Um, and last, Dr. Jara, it's been fun watching your family. Getting to know you has been wonderful, and, and, and knowing you and your family. And it's so fitting that your son is graduating this year. It's just kind of like you, your whole family is just graduating all together. So it's been a lot of fun spending time and um, watching your family grow and, and getting to know you. And I, I look forward to watching from afar. I'm really excited to see what all happens out there. Might have to come to Vegas, come check things out. So congratulations. Well, let me bring this to a close. By first of all, um, this is a long meeting and it's nothing like playing Fortnite. But we have some young kids in here who deserve recognition. If you're under 12, Sean Jr., Sam Ethan, stand up. Anybody under 12, stand up and take a bow. Let us give you a hand. One back there. Seriously, y'all have been wonderful, and your parents should be very proud of you because you've all been so very well behaved. Um, Mr. Danner, where are you? Raise your hand. Um, your wife is the luckiest woman in the world. She gets to come home to Lou Rawls every night. <laughs> I know all the women in the room are going, oh my God, he sounds like Lou Rawls. <laughs> Mr. Bixler, Rob, every husband in here is cursing you because every wife now expects flowers tomorrow at their workplace. <laughs> but congratulations to both of you uh, as well. Um, Dr. Jara, uh, I especially want to congratulate you. It's been a pleasure working with you for six years. Uh, I'm going to pay you what I believe is possibly the highest compliment a professional can get, and that is that in 
the six years you've been here, you work directly with our teachers. And I literally have never heard a teacher have anything bad to say about you. In fact, they just extol your virtues, um, incessantly talk about how wonderful you are and how much they enjoy working with you. And I think that's a true credit to you that your fellow educators hold you in such high esteem. And we're going to miss you, and we're going to miss the example you set. So congratulations to you. Let me uh, close by saying this as well to all of our newly appointed administrators. Um, I always like to say that um, this appointment really signifies one very special word, and that word is trust. By this appointment, it's a signal that this board and this administration, we trust your educational leadership abilities, we trust your judgment, but perhaps most importantly, we trust you with the future of our community, our children. And for that, your loved ones, your wives, your uh, coworkers should be extremely proud of you as we are very, very proud of you tonight. So congratulations, uh, go grab an ice cream and enjoy your evening. And thank you for letting us recognize you tonight. Congratulations. That's for principals and assistant principals, not for my cabinet members. Hang on. All right, let's go ahead and uh, continue on with our regularly scheduled meeting. And we make a preliminary announcement. Any individual who would like to address an item on our consent or non-consent agenda may do so by filling out a yellow speaker card such as this. You can get this yellow speaker card from Ms. McGill, who's a lady at the far left-hand side of the dais. Uh, when that agenda item comes up, I will recognize you to speak at that time. Uh, I will invite you to the podium, and you will have three minutes to address the board. I would ask that you please begin with your uh, name and address, and then we'll start the clock um, after that. Uh, so with that, um, Dr. Jenkins, do we have any changes to our agenda this evening? One change, Chairman, we have a student on the discipline matrix, uh, uh, student initials JS on 5.01 will be moved to non-consent. I beg your pardon, 6.01 will be moved to non-consent, 1701. 1701, all right. 
Actually, 1702 probably. Are we going to do it before the, the naming? Doesn't really. Doesn't matter, Mr. Rodriguez. 1702. Okay. So I find cause to amend the agenda as suggested by the superintendent. Can I entertain a motion to do so, please? So moved. It's been moved by Vice Chair Cobert. It's been seconded by Ms. Gould. Is there any debate or discussion of that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Show the agenda amended. Um, we are now on consent, and we do have one special recognition, and then we have one speaker on an item um, that's special to this board. Uh, Mrs. Robinson, I've asked you to read the resolution. Would you mind doing that for us? Of this course. is a agenda item, board members. This is on um, the Foundation for Foster Children and our recognition of the wonderful work that they do. Yes. Mrs. Robinson. Proclamation, May 2018 National Foster Care Awareness Month. Whereas, beginning in 1988, each U.S. president has issued a proclamation to recognize that May shall be known as National Foster Care Month in order to raise awareness of the needs of youths in foster care and to celebrate the many supporters who are making a powerful and positive difference in their lives. And, whereas families are the primary source of love, identity, self-esteem, and support for children, and they are the foundation of our communities, and... Whereas over 2,000 children are abused or neglected by their parents or caretakers every year in the Tri-County area, Orange, Osceola, and Seminole, and are removed from their homes to be placed in a safe, stable, and loving environment. And whereas of those that are identified as foster children, only 58% will graduate from high school by age 19 compared to 87% of all 19-year-olds and Whereas, fewer than 3% of foster children will earn a college degree by age 25, compared to 28% of all 25-year-olds. And, whereas, without the necessary education and skills by age 24, only half of all foster children will be employed. And whereas our community is filled with generous individuals, families, and organizations who willingly help foster children in their time of need so that they can experience loving guardianship and some of the joys of family life. And whereas OCPS has designated certain individuals at each school as foster care liaisons to facilitate efficient communication and collaboration with the state agencies in order to deliver the best educational services possible to foster children in Orange County. Now, therefore, be it resolved that, that the School Board of Orange County, in order to bring awareness to all those that work to bring academic success for foster children in Orange County, does hereby recognize the month of May 2018 as National Foster Care Awareness Month. That's wonderful. I'm so glad I had you read that out loud because I think it really illustrates the challenges that many of these children face and the great work done by this foundation. We do have a speaker, one of the founders of this foundation, Ms. Betsy Bell. Betsy, welcome and thank you for all the wonderful you work you do for our community's children. We're so pleased that you're here tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity and for recognizing this month. Um, my name is Betsy Bell. I'm the executive director at the Foundation for Foster Children. Um, there's so many kids in our community, and the state provides a very cookie-cutter approach um, to what they're provided. So the foundation is honored to be able to provide them the personalized support that they need to really do well. As we know, all of our kids are very different, have different needs, different wants, different things that they want to do. And so the foundation is able to make that happen for them. So, as you mentioned, kids come in at no fault of their own um, and at the hands or the decisions of their parents, um, the ones who are supposed to love them. And so, we are now 10 years old to really address those needs um, as the Foundation for Foster Children. And Woody Rodriguez is our fearless leader on the board as a board chair. Um, and the collaboration that we experience between OCPS and uh, helping with the community-based care of Central Florida and bringing everybody together to the same table to really talk about what's in the best interest of children and how do we help them reach their goals. We do that through um, tutoring. So we have provided one-on-one -on -one tutoring to over 400 children um, that's in their homes, individualized, um, just to help 
get them on track to graduate, to be promoted to the next grade level. Um, all kids in foster care are given free tuition in Florida, and yet if we can't get them across the line to get their GED or to get their high school diploma, then they lose out on that opportunity. So the foundation focuses really on helping that educational piece um, early on. Also, we have a, a pilot advocacy program that we've piloted for only Orange County Public Schools for our high school kids who are in foster care. And so that's been incredible. Last year, we had a young lady graduate from Edgewater who had incredible grades, but she was in foster care and she was lived in nine different places in her senior year. And so just having that person who can motivate and encourage, make sure that they can get to school, that those barriers aren't there, and really working well with Dr. Bernier's team and the whole team at OCPS to really make sure that our liaisons are in the know. They know that we're a resource to help with things beyond education. So if they want to go on a field trip or go to grad bash or get their senior pictures taken, all the things that are normal and typical childhood ex experiences that are really important for our kids as they grow as an individual. Um, we also were able to be at that tech graduation um, recently, and it was incredible just to see some of our kids that have tried so hard, and they get to walk across the stage and get their GED and really be excited and celebrated and um, by, by people who really care about them. So I'd like to close just by thanking all of you for the tireless work that you do, all of the teachers and principals left in the room, um, and really who ensure that our kids who are in foster care in Orange County Public Schools are not those statistics that, um, that you read off, but that they are leaders in our community because they are amazing kids who have been through some serious trauma but have such incredible potential and hope um, for, for what they have in the next few years. So thank you very much. Ms. Bell, thank you again. And Mr. Rodriguez, thank you for your volunteer leadership on that board. Um, that's wonderful. Um, all right, we um, are now on consent agenda. Anything else, board members, on the consent agenda before we move on for the good of the order? All right, can I now entertain a motion to approve the consent <coughs> agenda? It's been moved Second. by Ms. Gould and Second. seconded by Mrs. Gordon. Uh, and is there any debate or discussion of that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Show the consent agenda adopted. So board members, we are now on agenda item 17. Do you want to highlight something, Mrs. Robinson? Oh, you know what? I'm glad you said that. I don't want to steal your thunder. You go first, because I wanted to say something on it. Uh, it was under, um, it's, I think it's under 13. Why do I think it's under 13? No, I'm mistaken about that. No. The Four Rivers one, Mr. Rodriguez, where was it again? 1302. 1302, I was right. Okay, it's 1302. Yeah, no, take it away. It's your school. I just wanted to highlight very quickly um, a wonderful partnership that OCPS is entering into between Edgewater High School and with CTE, um, with Mike, Dr. Armbruster and his faculty, with um, the Four Rivers Foundation. They're going to be building one of their greenhouse projects on the um, site, and it's perfect because it's the piece of land that's um, left over from the original condemnation of the trailer park when we when we did that condemnation back in 2000, whatever it was, 2008, I believe it was, um, to renovate the school. And so it's behind, for those of you who aren't familiar, here's Edgewater, it sits on the south side of Maury Road. On the north side, right behind CVS there, is a piece of land that's just been sitting there waiting because you have to hold on to land that has been condemned for more than 10 years if we can do anything with it. It's a perfect place and it's gonna be this greenhouse um, with Four Rivers um, <coughs> Foundation and Fleet Farming and all these really cool things and it's gonna be a CT program and it's gonna be in conjunction with the Edgewater Engineering Science and Technology Magnet and um, it's really, really gonna be exciting. So it took a long time to get it all put together with all the pieces, Laura Kelly and her Staff and has worked so hard to get all the pieces put together, but we're hopeful that they'll get it built and it'll open this fall for school. It is exciting. And I just want to echo your thanks to Mr. Rivers and his foundation. Um, they have uh, very quickly in the last four or five years became a major supporter in so many ways philanthropically of Orange County Public Schools, not just this program, but a number of other programs around the county that he supports um, um, in agribusiness and in business in general. So. 
Uh, if any of his representatives are listening or Mr. Rivers himself, please uh, convey to him our thanks for all he does for public education. All right, um, so board members, we are now on agenda item 17.01, Dr. Jenkins or Mr. Rodriguez. Pardon me? We're done with the consent. Didn't, didn't we vote on it? We did, right? Yes. Okay, I lose track myself sometimes. We did, we voted on the consent agenda. All right, 1701. Good evening. It's an exciting evening because uh, tonight uh, I'm bringing forth a request for approval of the School Board of Orange County, Florida to select a name for 19EN7 elementary magnet school, the gifted elementary magnet school opening in 2018-2019. According to the school board policy FF, the superintendent shall present three alternative names based upon input from the school's community stakeholders. The name of a school is selected by the school board. The superintendent shall present three names that were submitted from community input. In the case of 19EN7 Gifted Magnet Elementary School, the following process was used to select names for submission to the board. Suggestions for the school name were open to the students and parents who enrolled at the new OCPS Gifted Elementary Magnet School. An electronic survey was emailed to all parents and faculty at the new Gifted Elementary Magnet School. Students were also able to participate in the survey using the link provided to their parents. The survey was open from March 29th through April 5th of 2018. Selections were limited to one person throughout the duration of the survey window. The results of the initial school naming survey yielded 71 unique results and an additional 35 duplicate results. A stakeholder committee open to all students who were enrolled at the gifted uh, elementary magnet school and their parents was formed to narrow the list of the potential school names. All stakeholders who volunteered to serve on the committee were permitted to participate in the process. The committee comprised of nine parents and three students. They were able to narrow the list from 71 unique names to 14. And again, an electronic survey was emailed to parents and faculty at the new Gifted Elementary Magnet School, seeking their input for the school's name based on the 14 names selected by the committee. Students were also able to participate in this survey using the link that was provided to their parents. The survey was open from April 24th through April 28th of 2018. Based on the results of this survey, a final electronic survey was emailed to parents and faculty at the new Gifted Elementary Magnet School, seeking their input for the school's name based on the top four names from the previous survey. Students, again, were also able to participate in the survey using the link provided to their parents. This survey was open from May 2nd through May 5th of 2018. The top three responses were Orlando Gifted Academy, followed by Galileo Elementary, and Gifted Elementary Magnet School. The Orlando Gifted Academy, this name captures the identity of our great city and the focus of our school population. All students attending the new school reside in Greater Orlando and are identified as gifted. Galileo Elementary, this name speaks to the famous scientist Galileo Galilei, considered by many to be the father of modern science, who embodies many characteristics of our gifted students. Gifted Elementary Magnet School, this name has been the temporary moniker of a school while awaiting the naming process. It would be familiar to the families and recognizable to the community of OCPS. We're recommending the approval of the School Board of Orange County, Florida to select a name for the 19EN7 Gifted Elementary Magnet School, which will be opening in 2018-2019. Superintendent Jenkins. 
Thank you, Dr. Diaz. As you recall from your policy, we no longer actually present first, second, and third place, but the top three from that community, and then allow the board to deliberate normally with the board member who actually has the school in their district and can support your decision. Chairman? Mrs. Robinson, it's located in your district. I'll recognize you first. Thank you, and I want to, I want to talk about the, want to do the name, but then I also just want to talk about the, what we're doing. We're opening the new school, and that's really your baby, Chair Sublette. You've been so, you've been so um, behind this from the beginning, so I, I want to make sure you get your kudos, because I know you're excited about it, just like we are. I'm just fortunate that it falls in District 6. Um, when, um, when the name came up and the names got it proposed, then the one that got by far the most um, name, name cho I mean percentage of um, name chosen was Orlando Gifted Academy. And that's uh, the one I'm going to support tonight because that's the one that um, has the support of the, the most support of uh, the families. So it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful um, name. And I, if I remember right, did I hear that we also got a mascot or is that coming? The Owls, the Orlando Gifted Academy Owls. Yes, we're, we're the Owls. Yes. And do, have they chosen school colors? Do we know? Black and gold? Yes, black and gold. Black and gold, the Orlando Gifted Academy Owls that will be wearing black and gold. That's phenomenal. So anyway, congratulations to, and there's families in the audience tonight, so congratulations, wonderful. Um, and I look forward to um, getting to see that in action next year. <coughs> yes, so I want to make a motion. Let's see. I move that we approve the selection of the name for 19EN7 to be the Orlando Gifted Magnet School. No, wait, Orlando Gifted, oh yeah, Orlando Gifted Academy opening in 2018. I'll second that. All right, it's been moved by Mrs. Robinson and seconded by Ms. Cobert. Um, first of all, I want to thank this board because it was a collective effort that, that made this happen, uh, really. I want to thank this board for supporting this concept and Dr. Jenkins for shepherding it through, uh, making it happen. Um, I want to thank the parents for sticking around. I forgot we were naming your school tonight, and I was like, gosh, I can't believe they're sticking around the whole meeting. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I have to confess, I, I, I love the name, but I've been sitting up here noodling on all the great nicknames for Galileo, like the Galileo Planets or the Telescopes or something like that, but I actually like Orlando Gifted Academy by far the best, and the Owls, what a great, what a great mascot name for your school, so congratulations. So, uh, Mrs. Robinson, um, I support it as well. And with that, anybody else? All right, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any further debate or discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Show it adopted unanimously. Congratulations, Owls. All right. All right, that was good. Mrs. Robinson said you all actually have a cheer now. You do it. You. Hoo hoo. Congratulations, y'all. Thanks for sticking around. All right, so we are now on uh, new agenda item 17.02 to board members. Uh, this is a student discipline matter. Let me make a preliminary announcement on this before we go any further. All board meetings are videotaped and aired on Orange TV in their entirety with the exception of student discipline and employee matters. In keeping with school board policy, if a student discipline case or employee matter comes before us, uh, those comments will not be included in the broadcast version of the board meeting in the interest of student and employee privacy. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Uh,
So, Superintendent, I um, um, I would like to say something. I want to commend you. I, I think it's a mark of a great leader and a great administration when they start to seed um, with their lieutenants other school districts throughout the state and throughout now throughout the country. So, um, hasn't gone unnoticed by me or members of this board. Um, I think just in the last three or four years, um, I'm probably guessing wrong, but I think we've seen four or five of your. Um, four or five of your cabinet members go on, and even sometimes below cabinet level members go on to become superintendents, and that's a great tribute to you. And now to have one go on and become the superintendent of the fourth largest district in America, it's a tremendous tribute to you and your leadership. So congratulations, you make us proud, and congratulations for nurturing leaders and encouraging them to fly. Because a lot of folks like to keep their best people at home and don't encourage that, and I think it's um, good leadership that you encourage them to aggressively go out there and pursue those options. Thank you. Mrs. Robinson. Um, we're actually now on, uh, there are no committee reports. We're on statement of policy level issues. Any board members? General discussion. Okay, good. Um, Dr. Jenkins, I was wondering if you could give a little um, brief statement kind of to explain um, what your, you and your um, staff have put together as far as the um, I don't even know what we're calling it, what you're calling it, the school choice fair for students um, from our traditional high schools, uh, of all the alternative options that they have, all the choice options? So we've had, uh, thank you for asking Ms. Robinson, it'll actually be in your next board update. We've had um, some discussions around how we help some of our students who may be struggling and worried about with their parents uh, worried about whether or not they will make it to graduation and is there an opportunity for us to give them several choices several options that they might consider uh, in a coherent nature so that they don't have to wander around on their own to figure out what those options are and so uh, Dr. Border, Dr. Vasquez, Dr. Jar and others have been working on what we call commitment to commencement and it is actually going to um, start with a fair on July 31st. Uh, those students who are overaged and very short of credits in 11th and 12th grade only, if they are short of grades and uh, uh, short of credits and overage, they're going to at least have an opportunity to hear about some options. Now, those options include remaining in their home school, where we've got some phenomenal things going on, such as Evans High School, where they have some evening programs for those students, or something through our Orange Technical College, through some of our charter schools, through some of our alternative schools. All of that information is going to be shared with those students who fall into that category. Our counselors are going to be calling and talking with uh, both the students and their parents and encouraging them to come to that fair. It will be on July 31st at each one of our Orange Technical College campuses. And that'll be our first go at it to make sure all of our children who may be short on credits and overaged, quite frankly, at the junior and senior level, we don't want them to even consider leaving without their diploma. And so we want to show them all of the options that are present, including finishing in their current high school. So we're looking forward to that. We'll get you more details as we prepare. And did you mention that's just the beginning? Did, did mm -hmm. I miss? Yeah, we intend to do it probably twice a year, probably um, in the summer and then at the in a semester break, we would offer it again. What we're intending to do, members of the board, is make sure we have every opportunity, every effort on our part not to let anyone slip through the cracks. Don't leave us. Let us show you your options and let us help you help get you to the finish line. Great. Thank you for sharing that. I, I just have been so impressed with that and that. Um, stemmed from where it kind of started uh, last year when we had um, the ProPublica article on some of our charter schools and they were not pr promoting all, they weren't um, sharing all the information 100% accurately on how it's being handled and and we as a board said we want parents to be involved on those decisions so Dr. Jenkins and her staff put together and said you know we'll let them know all their options and I think it's a great way to share with them all the options we have because we have a lot of options here with OCPS and then there are some other options the charter school options workforce advantage academy and the three different ALS schools so lots of different opportunities for families so thank you for sharing that and I wanted to add to um, I was 
um, like Ms. Gordon said earlier, she and I were at the Orange Technical College graduation the other night, and it was amazing. Um, there were about 1,500 graduates, but 900 walked. It's a lot. That's a, it's a lot. It's a lot to walk. Yeah, and we. Um, yeah, 900 something walked. 1,900 graduates. So we um, we shook hands for a long time. But I <laughs> we asked the students when they come across, you know, what your plan is, and all of them have either already been working or are starting work, and um, very excited and very ready. And a lot of them were going on to college. Mm -hmm. Some of them that you know, some of the students we saw here tonight were going on to college. So it's really exciting, very fun. And I don't know if y'all have ever been at a graduation in the Amway Center when they didn't warn you <coughs> that the fireworks were going to go off. Oh. And then when the fireworks go off behind you, you think, oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I didn't think about it. It was my first one at the Amway for no, this season. I'm ready. No, this season. No. It's my first one this season in the Amway. But, but this season, so it just didn't dawn on me. I'm saying this year. You this, forgot, you forgot. I forgot from year to year. I, I'm, I'm now on board for the rest. I'm ready to go. I won't jump out of my skin. It's exciting. Ms. Flynn. Thank you. A couple of meetings ago, it might have been a work session, I mentioned um, if OCPS could put together either a taping or a webinar regarding our construction and site selection process. I think the parents that spoke from my district, from District 2, um, I think demonstrates. Well, you and I are going to host it. Right, right. But I think it demonstrates just not a, a, a need. I'm not saying they don't know. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm, I encourage them to come. I encourage them to come. But I think for many people, that complexity of how we buy one site over another and when it comes is is unknown to them. And so uh, Mrs. Gould and I want to host that, but I was going to ask the superintendent if her staff, who, who ever might be helping us with that, if they could get in touch with us and we could start working on that. I'd, I, I think for me, I'd like for us to be able to do it. I think you mentioned um, maybe doing it at the beginning of the new school year. Like after the third week or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, thank you. Got it. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Gordon. Yes. I was just piggybacking on Miss Nancy Robinson when she asked Dr. Jenkins about the school choice. Um, I wanted to ask how will this be incorporated into the state graduation rate where it would count for Orange County Public Schools? Yes, yeah, certainly um, if they are within their cohort and they graduate, they will count toward our graduation rate. Because even if they are, um, you know, as you mentioned earlier, they are over age. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I do know they have stipulations on that too. Yeah, they and, have to be within their four-year cohort. Credits, and um, so they will be able to get the schools will be able to get credit for that if, if they as are well or yeah, the it, county. I'm sorry, if they're within their four-year cohort from ninth grade mm -hmm. to twelfth grade, that's the county. That's the county. Mm -hmm. But if they come after that and they're trying to pick up these hours that they get, we would not. The individual school would not get credit for that. That's but the correct. overall Orange County graduation rate. I'm asking where would that fall? The overall county graduation rate, if they are beyond that four-year cohort yes, from yes. the time they should have been in ninth grade until 12th grade, right. if they go beyond that, we won't get credit for the graduation, I but we will so. still push them over the line. Right. Because we've got to get them through. And this would fall within our adult education arena they anyhow can, they with can even Technical College. That's correct. They can even okay, go the so adult they education. Can get their, they can get their rate up correct. there. Okay. I just wanted to make that stipulation because I don't want everybody to think that, oh, because everybody's fighting now to, to get their rates up. And I'll uh, get their graduation rates pretty high right now. Thank you, Ms. Robinson, for bringing it up. And thank you, Dr. Jenkins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mrs. Gordon. Ms. Cobert. Two things to follow up on Mrs. Robinson as well. Um, I love the idea of the commitment to commencement and trying to get all of our children across the finish line in whatever way is best for them. Um, just a detailed question. So what happens if they can't attend that fair? Would it be um, how do we let the parents and children know about the 
wide menu of available options through us or through our alternative schools, charter schools, whatnot? It's a great question. So not only will they be getting calls from their counselors if they fall into certain categories, uh, they will also receive a letter from us uh, listing all of those various options and giving them, providing them contact information if they need to contact uh, those schools, those choices on their own as well. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And second, I just wanted to um, commend Dr. Williams for her Start With Us program that several of us went to last week where we got to work with students from all of the high schools, work with them on resume skills, interviewing skills, and then they got to interview for opportunities for entry-level positions, not only with Orange County Public Schools, but some other um, employers who were there. I just thought it was a great opportunity. I, I myself had to work my way through college, started out community college and needed to work and to put this together for our students and give them that opportunity and to start in a career with us I thought was really well done so I wanted to commend you and um, Dr. Williams for that thank you Ms. Gould um, I had that on my list as well, the job fair. It was really an uh, amazing experience, I think, for us in helping support it and, and getting that time with the students, those of us that participated. But um, the employers and the students together and them kind of walking into that room and knowing they had to go shake hands and go sign up and you know they got a little you knew the ones that were a little intimidated and you just had to help them through that first one and then they were off to the races and um, it, that is a skill they'll take with them for the rest of their life and I think it was just an invaluable day not only helping our employers ourselves but our kids um, a, a couple things that I also wanted to highlight was uh, I went to the um, universal graduation, the work-study program. And I think this is the third year that I have done it, and every year I am just blown away by that program and how it has invigorated our students. So going to the conversation earlier, if we can match those kids up with something that they really like and get them in the right environment, they just blossom, and that is a, a perfect example of it. Um, and the last uh, thing, I wanted to thank uh, Orlando Health Health Central for um, making the Da Vinci robot available to many of our students out in the West, uh, our middle school and high school students, to come and not only get hands-on activity, but a demonstration. So it was a real eye-opener, not only for the future surgeons, but people who might want to repair those machines or or be in the, the OR in what that skill is or what has to be done. And they were just phenomenal. Um, and it's just really cool to be able to do surgery with a robot. So it's, it's just kind of a cool thing. So I wanted to thank them publicly. Thank you, Ms. Gould. Um, I have to tell you, I, I love it when I sit up here and I hear about something I didn't, wasn't aware was going on out there, and I, I wasn't aware of that. So thank you for bringing it up, Ms. Gobert and Ms. Gould. I need to read my board updates more carefully. That's exciting. I didn't know we were doing that. Um, Couple things. First of all, I, I I just want to echo Dr. Jenkins. I know you already nodded your head in assent that you're going to make it happen. But the idea of a webinar or something that folks could go online to our uh, website and learn more about the facilities process. Um, I hope that when we do that, um, and I've always struggled to articulate this a little bit, but I think it's super important that we have some simple illustration of our revenue stream and the constraints that we have and our budgeting process and our priorities over that because that's the number one thing that folks don't understand um, you know and, and and you know we're all human and I think human nature is to not look beyond our own backyard and not realize that okay well you know we've got 12 schools still to finish on the original list and we've got another you know dozen schools on the relief school list mm -hmm. and then we've got another and and you know uh, we, we don't go out and borrow willy-nilly we're not the Federal Reserve we don't print the money you know, our revenue comes in tranches, tranches, I can never say that word right, but anyway, it comes in chunks. Mm -hmm. And um, I just think folks need to have that explained in a, in a simple way. 
Um, on that point, for what it's worth, um, uh, Dylan Thomas and Lauren Roth cobbled together for me sort of last minute, and I want to thank them both publicly, a presentation I did on facilities in the district the other day, and um, uh, I thought it was excellent. And frankly, you know, we just borrowed from slides from various PowerPoints mm -hmm. and put it together, and the whole presentation was about 30, 35 minutes in length, about half of which was dedicated to facilities, real estate acquisition, um, and, and some new slides that Ms. Roth had created for me as well. So something you might want to look at. Um, I'm not saying it's perfect. Um, you know, um, Dylan could get it to you because um, he, he put together the final one. You know, it's about 70 slides, but it sounds like a lot I actually got through it in 30 minutes because um, about 30 of the slides I wanted to include, if you remember from the facilities presentation, the pictures of the schools. So when I got to that point, I didn't talk about each one. I just said, you know, just flip through them about five, ten seconds per slide. People love to see the pictures of the schools and what they look like, you know. So, um, hear me. Yes, so, Dr. Jenkins. So I was going to mention a, a staff is already working on the webinar. A lot of that um, critical information is actually a part of that work. Uh, but I, I don't think we had thought about including the revenue stream, so that's an excellent idea. I'll make sure that's included. That will be included in the webinar as well. Uh, we can certainly get uh, all of the board members that deck uh, that was provided to you, but understand that, that the webinar would probably condense some of that information and we were hoping to do some video footage as well but staff's already working on it I'm excited we we're doing that just because it would be so nice when people bring these issues up to direct them to the website and say hey there's a great YouTube video or however we do it of 30 minutes long that really explains our, our planning process and all, and all that um, I would like to ask one thing though and, and I may have missed it um, and it came up earlier tonight Dr. Jenkins um, so I don't want to get us in the weeds too much right now, but I'd love to have someone come share with me. When we did our facilities update on March 29th, um, on there there were 12 schools, 3, 6, 9, 10 schools, 10, 10 sites, 10 facilities that were repurposed future use facilities. Um, but I was of the impression that we had not yelled, nailed down yet, and, I, uh, and I'm looking at that presentation now. We had uh, on March 29th the TBD uh, to be determined on the capital program projected need for those uh, for those 10-11 um, facilities. Um, you know, I know we're going to make them happen, but I would love to know, and, and when I say no, I don't need to know in the next week or two, but in the next couple months, what our budget plans are for those facilities or what your thinking is or what your cabinet's thinking is on those facilities because a lot of those facilities, you know, if you guys go back and look at it was slide seven of the facilities presentation, um, you know, they really are spread across the district. Uh, I think there's probably one or two of them in every one of your districts. And um, I just sort of like to have a handle on what kind of budget dollars we're talking. Are we talking five or ten million? Are we talking ten, fifteen million? Gosh knows we don't have that kind of money lying around under the couch cushions uh, anywhere. but. Um, you know, just to give a little bit more certainty to it, if I could, Dr. Jenkins. And um, the last thing I want to say is I just want to echo, I don't know who brought it up. I already forgot who brought it up. Who asked a ProPublica question a moment ago? You did. You know, I just, you know, it probably goes without saying, but I just want to emphasize that because um, it bothers me and it still wrinkles me a year later. Yeah. When those overage, outside their cohort kids go and graduate, they do not benefit our graduation rate. I just want to emphasize something the superintendent, they do not, I know you all know that, but that's the one thing that just rankled me the most about that article is the implication, it wasn't even an implication, it was explicitly said. The theme of that article was those kids were going there to boost our graduation rate, which was so frustrating because that showed the writer had no understanding at all of the graduation rate standards that were all adhere to in this country because they're federal graduation rate standards and you can't count kids outside their cohort if they go to alternative school. So um, enough said. I know we all know that. I just think folks just don't realize that and don't remember that. Ms. Flynn. Thank you. Um, and, and to dovetail on that, one of the things that I got out of that whole discussion when we were having it was the parent and the 
student who talked to us saying, you know, hey, we were just recommended that we leave. And at the time, I said, I think having a list of what strategies were implemented for that child would be helpful when you show the parent or the student this is what we have. Um, so anyway, that was that. I, I, can I just brag about a couple of schools? These are some really very creative and um, lessons that took a lot of creativity and a lot of work. At Sunrise, I got a letter from a parent who said, my daughter, my kids really enjoyed the fishing segment with PE. So the lifetime activities, they taught the kids how to fish, coordination, sun safety, water safety. They did it without hooks. That was at sunrise. Um, Greg French and Bradley, oh my goodness, I don't, uh, Waltz, I think. Um, ocean cleanup at Discovery. Crystal Walsh took uh, with a grant that she got um, about 97 kids and parents and uh, teachers went to the beach for cleanup. Yeah, and then over at Forsyth Woods, oh my goodness, please forgive me, I'm, I'm, the names are leaving me, but the music and the art teachers put together um, the arts at Forsyth, and they had just a whole day where kids rotated. The Steinway Society was there with, a, with their beautiful grand piano on stage doing a music module. They had a sculptor. They had the brass band of Central Florida. They had a storyteller. They had a, a dance. I just, I, it just amazes me the creativity that our teachers bring. And so those are three examples, but I know it's going on in all of our schools. So I just wanted to say kudos to all these creative teachers who are going above and beyond. Thank you, kudos. Uh, Mrs. Robinson. I want to, um piggyback on the job fair thing and just point out remember the email that went around about if you um, recommend someone to be a bus driver and they actually do get it you get the hundred dollar thing I've been telling people about that and I just want to tell y'all what I do when I uber a lot because I live so close to downtown and it downtown when I'm going down there parking's awful I've been recruiting our uber drivers <laughs> to be <laughs> to sign it I said you like driving we, we have buses. <laughs> um, so anyway, I've been try I'm trying. I'm trying to get that $100. <laughs> anyway, um, and then also I wanted to say another wonderful shout out to the chess tournament that was Saturday. Um, I, I not only, yes, not, I, that was wonderful. Um, I've, been, I've been out in the community doing things because of something I'm working on right now, and I'm running into all kinds of people. And I had a dad tell me last night, I have twin boys. One's an athlete, and he's way into this. And the other one, he's really, really bright, and he's into academics, and he did the chess tournament. And he was telling me how amazing it was that UCF was all set up at massive room with chess teams and every and how much fun his son had and just how amazing it was. And um, I just wanted to say that's a, that's been a wonderful um, addition to our competition circuit and the day when the day comes that money just falls out of the sky from Tallahassee we just have so much money we don't I think we need a competitions department with one person seriously um, and that be their their job because we have so many competitions and some of them haven't gotten the attention that they need through the years um, or, or lately because it's just, it's tight. And when it's someone isn't there, when they're having to spread themselves so thin, it's difficult. I know the oration contest and things like that that if, so anyway, so when the money falls, when it just falls from the sky, competition department, that would be great. Congratulations. Mrs. Gordon. Yes, thank you. I wanted to go back to a point you brought out about the um, the repurposing our buildings. Um, I wanted to ask Dr. Jenkins also and the facilities. Um, generally, I don't think it's been lately, but every now and then, Dr. Jenkins, we do finish our projects under budget, and I haven't heard much about that. So either we're on budget um, or whatever, but when we do, do look at the COVID report and what we may or may not save, if that report could come to the board also, and, and how we would reposition that 
through their advice or whatever based on our needs okay so thank you for bringing that up but i do want to say um on a good note and you all may not think it but since i am the house residence librarian um you you just approved tonight 12.02 which is very very important this time of year um we are all killing ourselves to make sure every thing is accounted for I have over 13,000 items in my library, mostly books, that I have to be accounted for, and that's a small K through 12 school. Our other schools are way above that, so we just approved 12.02, approval of the fixed asset deletion and restoration port. This is the time to delete. This is the time to weed. This is the time to get rid of molded, old, raggedy, <laughs> dilapidated books and equipment, overhead projectors, things that we are no longer using. We do need to surplus them. This is a part of the superintendent's evaluation. I think this was a big thing with the board. Previously, our textbooks, and we need to recover our items. I know um, the different police departments and municipalities had called and said that they did find some of our um, asset management and brought it back to the school system. So I do want us to really pay attention because I don't know how strict we are here in Orange, but I know that they are strict where I work. And we were told to get certain things out if they were outdated. Books back in 2000, they're 18 years old. And most of the time when you open them up, they have dust mites in them. They have mold and mildew in them. They are all torn up. They're very germy. The children are coming in with all kind of allergies and post-nasal drips. Oh my God, we were spraying and trying to clean up everything today. And I, that's right, you better not touch it. Because when I go in, because the librarian and the tech are supposed to keep these equipment spotless. We paid quite a bit of money for them. They should be wiped down every day. Every day they are used. They really, for the health of our children. That's why the kids are getting these allergies. The room should be um, cleaned every day. No teacher should leave their classroom in disarray. Everything should be orderly, clean, wiped down. And, and that's what our nurse does. She, I mean, everybody, not only the nurse, the custodian. You know, we have to get that garbage out by the door, you know, because all this is a health hazard, and we wonder why we have all these allergies that we're getting. So, Dr. Jenkins, I, I'm, I'm really asking uh, this time that the librarians and the tech and the textbook manager, we have the facilities. You have put in the equipment. I'm using Follett Destiny, which is a great system. We were under so many other systems, but now all our schools are under one, which is a dynamic system. It works. It gets it in and out of there. You could get your inventory, but now is the time to find everything. No teacher should be leaving any barcoded items in their rooms. Textbooks are otherwise. These, these, these items are very expensive. And then it falls on the student. And I don't know what we do in Orange, but I know in Osceola they cannot graduate. And I don't care if they check those items out, the laptops. If they checked out that equipment and took those laptops from one school to another, it, it does not go out of the system. We are under that same system. So we, it should not go out. Those kids cannot graduate until they bring it back and that um, you know some kind of mend is made and this is where we lose a lot of things so I just wanted to bring that up and I thank you for having that on there for the end of the year because this is very important and saving us thousands and thousands of dollars all righty thank you very much for that thank you thank you mr. chair Mrs. Gordon, I'm sitting here listening to you talk about cleanliness and thinking, I have three kids you need to have a talk with. <laughs> <laughs> you deliver the lecture much better than I do. <laughs>
<laughs> All the books that you have. So, Dr. Jenkins, um, when we do that letter, is there any way that we can consider uh, about all the programs after the fair? Because it sounded like there was going to be a subsequent letter possibly as well to say. Okay, well, can we also welcome any parent who wants to make an appointment with their school counselor to explore any of those options to do that in that letter as well? Okay. All right, anything else for the good of the order? All right, we are adjourned. <laughs>